Coming up on this episode of SEO Lunch, we talk about how to properly content audit, as well as the behemoth that was MozCon 2013. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of SEO Lunch. I'm your host, Dan. And as you can tell, once again, I've been ditched, abandoned from my host, Matt. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to go back to what we normally talk about on SEO Lunch. And if you're not familiar with what that is, we go through the latest and greatest in inbound marketing, SEO, and content creation tips and tricks uh, curated from website inbound.org, which is a great compilation and um, kind of an inventory on all of the latest and greatest in inbound marketing stuff. Um, A little pause for the cause, folks. If you want to subscribe to us to get more of these great videos, if you really like what you see, or you just want to comment and get involved, go to our channel at Slocum Studio on YouTube. Subscribe from there or comment under our videos. Uh, You can also subscribe to our blog content that we oftentimes have at slocumstudio.com slash subscribe. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, here we go. Um, The first is our concept of the week, which is a content audit. Uh, Specifically, the article is called How to Perform a Content Audit from Christina Kledzik on Distilled. And a lot of the rest of today's show is going to kind of work with the MozCon that just happened. So there's an annual show that we have um, or that is held um, from the guys at Moz, which used to be SEO. Moz is now just Moz.com. So the first thing we're going to look at is trends and buzzwords from MozCon 2013. Excuse me. I can speak. It's an infographic uh, from the 97th floor.com about trending keywords. Then we're going to look at the definitive guide to technical mobile SEO. This comes from Vanessa Fox on Search Engine Land. And it's going to talk about going mobile and sort of what that process is going to look like, what you should do with your design. Then we're going to talk about breaking up with your keyword data. This is going to come from Annie Cushing on analytics.com. Good play on words there. Very cute. Uh, And it's going to talk about how keywords are useless, not useful anymore. Uh, Then we're going to look at building a winning video marketing strategy. That comes from Phil Nottingham consistent member of our show here um, from Distilled, and that's also from MozCon. It's a slideshow from there. And it talks about video marketing for your website or blog. And the last thing, our resource of the week, our tools to communicate wirelessly, specifically from the article, How to Prep Your Team While You're Away. And this comes from Mark on Contact Zilla. So let's start from the top here. How to perform a content audit. So our concept of the week this week is a content audit, and this comes from Christina Kledzik, another consistent member on our, on our show here. And what it basically talks about is auditing your website. So basically, so you, you have a small business, and you've created a website, and you've already developed content. Maybe you've put out 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 articles. Well, now it's been about a year, it's been two years, or maybe even a smaller period of time, and you want to go back and perform what's called a content audit. You're going to go back through... You might delete blog posts that aren't really helpful anymore. Maybe you'll consolidate them. Maybe you had four blog posts that all kind of tied together and you didn't even realize it because you put out so much content. It's also a good way to edit your content, add to existing content. We do that all the time here. Let's say, you know, we find a new plugin from an existing piece we talked about earlier. We'll go back and we'll add content there. This helps. It keeps your content fresh. It actually makes it easier for you to link. So if you do create, in our case, like on our other show, Press This, if we're talking about membership plugins and we talk about another membership plugin on the show, rather than spending our time um, and money creating a different uh, blog post specifically about that one membership plugin, we'll go back and we'll add a little bit of a discussion about that to an existing blog post about membership discussions. So that's always something great to do and something very easy to do with a CMS or a content management system like a WordPress or a Drupal. Um, it's just It's a good thing to do. Uh, It helps Google find you. If if there are too many spammy articles or short articles that they don't like, uh, that Google doesn't like or in its algorithm, it's basically going to kick your your, uh, website to the curb when you search for for common themes with your website. Moving on, we did have MozCon recently, uh, MozCon 2013, and there's a great infographic on the 97thfloor.com that goes over a bit of what was talked about and what's going to be trending this coming year for search engine optimization, content marketing, things of that nature. We had your typical speakers like Rand Fishkin, um, uh, Phil Nottingham was on there, and we had a few others that I, that I looked through. Um, but this infographic talks specifically about 
different keywords that were used and mentioned. And there are a couple things that I really want to point out, especially if you're new and you're wondering what kind of what way to go, what topic to pursue, what to do uh, specifically to kind of conserve your time and your money efforts with content marketing online. So surprisingly high on the list here, there was a lot, a lot, a lot of mobile discussion. We'll talk about that in a bit. So basically there wasn't much desktop talk. It's all mobile tablets like iPads, smartphones from Android or from Apple, things like that. Really, really, really um, poignant piece of conversation. Um, content was built up a lot. There was a lot, a lot, a lot of talk and mention about content, creating great content, much more of a focus on building your brand than relationships as well. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can read through here. Um, a couple little tips I came up with here that I found through this infographic. One was Rand Fishkin saying that 98% of Americans distrust information on the web. So you kind of have your work cut out for you. And this is also where you don't really want to come across as spammy. People already don't trust you. So you want to go ahead and make sure that they do trust you when they go to read your article. They want to make sure you want to make sure that you're a, a consistent resource for them in the future as they have different needs. So if somebody finds a great recipe for a pizza sauce on your pizza company's website, you can continue to create other recipes and people will continue to go back, subscribe, maybe buy pizza or pizza sauce from yourself. Uh, kind of following on the topic of mobile design and helping yourself be seen on a mobile interface, we talked about this a couple weeks ago in our concept of the week was app development, but this is on the same lines. This is the definitive guide to technical mobile SEO from Vanessa Fox. And it just talks about your options you have when going mobile because there are a few that you have. One of which is responsive web design. Creating one website that kind of dramatically changes as the, um, the screen size changes or as the resolution of your screen changes. So the same website, the same web page and everything, the same URL will look at one way on a desktop with a larger screen. And as you shrink down to a tablet and then shrink down even further to a smartphone will look different. Maybe they'll remove some ads from it. Maybe they'll make the menu change the location of the menu, make it easier to navigate if you're on a touch screen phone. You also have other options. One of the original ones being creating a separate mobile website with some code and there's some code in here. I wouldn't get too technical or worry about the technical aspect of it so much if you're new to this, but at least kind of use this as a brainstorming project to say, what do I want to go? Which way does my company want to go or my small business want to go with mobile web design and go from there. Next we have breaking up with your keyword data. This is Annie Cushing on analytics. Um, and she talks about how keywords are just about useless these days. We've talked before on the show about how not provided links or not provided is, is coming up more and more often. Actually, her, her, um, around 52% of the folks on her Google Analytics page are showing up as not provided, which means any keywords that people would have searched for that actually hit on, their, on her website are missing. You, she can't see what they are. And again, this is just created by Google and actually now on Mozilla Firefox and on Google Chrome web browsers so that you cannot see me as the business owner, cannot see what people are searching for when they find my website. This is obviously a dramatic, dramatic amount, and it's actually pretty much hand-in-hand -hand with what we're seeing on our Google, Google Analytics pages for both our website at the studio and my own personal website I've found. That's a large number. That's over half of the people going to my website, and I have no clue where they're coming from. What are they searching for? Why did they click on my website, and why did they like it? What she recommends are some tips, and I can recommend you some tips as well to sort of not get around this, but sort of ditch keywords and go in a different direction. You want to get organic and you want to get personal. You want to create content that people like. If I'm going to review a product, I want to make sure that I tell you on my page that it's a review of a product and I want to do a good job reviewing it. I want to allow you to comment on it and I want to be able to talk to you about what you thought about the product. If I review a pizza sauce recipe and I say, you know, I really didn't like this pizza sauce recipe. I want to make this a community environment. I want to let people subscribe to my review so I, they can see other reviews that I post about other pizza sauces or other food items, for example. Um, building a winning video marketing strategy. This comes from Phil Nottingham of Distilled, and this is also another slideshow and another presentation at MozCon. What this one talks about here is basically adding video to make your ads more appealing, to make your web design and your blog posts more appealing. It's always great to see a video. But of course, as you can imagine, with lighting, we have these nice mics here, cameras, things like that, that can all get quite expensive. What his slideshow does specifically is it sort of breaks down some costs if you are kind of concerned or unaware. It talks about the cost of potentially hiring an editor, somebody to come in and film, con film content for you and what that would look like. And he tries to make it a little bit less scary. But the most important part of this is that video marketing is going to become a, a more important aspect of web design. People like to watch videos. It's great. People like to watch TV and movies. 
And this is just another great way to advertise, advertising on YouTube with advertisements. Video is just becoming really huge, especially with social media sites like Vine, Cinemagram, things like that. Um, now we have Instagram that has uh, video content support as well. Advertising through video is just becoming more and more prevalent and important. And this is a really cool article, a really cool resource to look at to decide, oh, well, I can afford this, or this is what I, the route I should take, and what should I do? He even looks at some kind of shooting. Um, uh, Phil Nottingham himself is actually a, has a theater background, I found out, in reading the slideshow. So he talks about different ways you can kind of align lighting and things like that. It's a really neat article. I recommend checking it out. Last but not least, we have a resource of the week, which is tools to communicate wirelessly. And this is again from how to prep your team while you're away on ContactZilla. And this is a great resource because it provides a lot of great tools to keep in contact with your team. So if you're the owner of the business uh, in question, like the small business or, or what have you, and you want to contact with your folks and you want to create assignments or just talk to people and keep in touch while you're on vacation or away, especially now when it's a summer out, it's hot, you're going on vacation, you're, you're going somewhere cooler or whatever you're doing. This is a great resource and there's a lot of cool ones in here. Um, they have a virtual support option in HipChat that they reference, um, one that's near and dear to Slocum Studios Heart, and also just a really great tool for kind of putting forth tasks and things like that is a, a service called Basecamp, and there's links for all this on this website. One I didn't really notice um, in reading through, and I'm reading through again to make sure it's not listed here, which it isn't, is uh, Google Docs through Google Drive. Um, this is a really, really helpful application you can use, and it's free, of course. Basically, if you have a Gmail account, you can go on. You can actually live edit documents and notes with other people on the fly over the web. So lots of really great tools today, and lots of really great tools throughout this entire segment here, this entire lunch. Well, I hope you could digest it all, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you didn't like something I talked about, you thought I missed something, or you had something else that you wanted me to talk about or want us to talk about on a future episode, please let us know in the comments below on our YouTube uh, channel, uh, Slocum Studio, or even on our blog. And please do subscribe to us on our blog at slocumstudio.com slash subscribe. Thanks a lot, folks.